Today on this old house, Jeff installs some floating oak shelves. Look, Ma, no brackets. That is rock solid. So you want to give it a shot? Sure. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. How excited are you guys to see that? Extremely. Right? You're going to have to choke down some dust first, though, before you get to that part. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the way. Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Westerly, Rhode Island where as you can see a lot has happened in the last couple of weeks. So the kitchen cabinets, uppers and lowers are in and the island cabinets are in as well. Countertops are starting to go in and check out the coffered ceiling. Look at that beautiful detail. This goes all throughout these two rooms. And then down here on the floors, we have got random with white oak with a beautiful finish on those again all throughout the two spaces. These base cabinets once they get doors will also get a wood countertop here. That's going to be white oak as well and it's going to look a lot like the shelving on either side of the fireplace. Hey Chris, Jeff how are you? Good Kevin how are you? All right so floating shelves all the rage these days. Yeah so we've got two inch uh, white oak floating shelves and we've got sort of a three-sided section here and we've installed a cleat on the wall and that cleat will accept the dado in the back of the shelf mm -hmm. so that you don't see any fasteners or no brackets are required. And, and they don't want to see brackets because they want to sort of keep this clean look and you get it with the shiplap, you yeah. know, it's sort of a modern look so exactly. I, it makes sense. This is the shelf right here? Yeah, so what we got is we made uh, two, two pieces of uh, five-quarter oak yes. and we glued that together. So you get a nice big Two-inch thick, yeah. right? And then we ran this through the table saw with the dado blade and created that slot and all run. the way through the back Thank and you. the two sides. Gotcha. So then after that, to conceal the front, we just applied a full-size nosing all the way in the front so it looks like one piece of wood. We've got holes pre-drilled already. So are you, these are pre-drilled holes, are you lined up to hit studs? Uh, actually, no, because we have a uh, three-quarter inch poplar on the back wall here attached to three-quarter inch plywood. Wow. So we got an inch and a half of material back there. All right, so before we put the shelf in, because these walls are finished painted and we've got a real tight tolerance, I'm just going to put tape on either side so that we don't mar that paint. We'll start with the bottom shelf. All right, so these are labeled. Here we go right here, bottom, and this is the top. So I'm aiming for that side bracket to go right there. Yep. All right. So this thing is very snug. So we're going to get real close with it. And we got to go in perfectly parallel, otherwise it'll bind. OK, you on? I'm on. OK. Hang on, hang on, let me get a little faster. Love how tight that fit is. <laughs> it is rock solid. Looks good too, huh? Yeah. All right. So that countertop will be the exact same material, same thickness. Wow. That is a great look. Love it. So now we got to do the mantle. All right. So similar idea. We want the floating look, solid piece of oak, a little bit thicker. So we're at three inches now. So a little this different technique. <laughs> yeah, this cleat. That's a big cleat. So we have a lot of mantle to hold up. So what we did was we, we cut out the back of the poplar there, and we had a lot of solid blocking. So we basically took that cleat and attached it back to a piece of three quarter, screwed through the back. We actually put five inch screws. So we have screws that all the way come to the front of this cleat. Huh. And then we a lot of glue. We put it back in against the solid block and we screwed top oh, and bottom all the way across. So you had the space to screw there and space to screw underneath here. Exactly. So that, and now this is the one that's really not oh, going anywhere. Oh, that thing's not going anywhere. All right, so let's take a look at what you're putting on it. Oh, that's So heavy. you look at it and it looks like it's one piece of, one piece of material. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's because it really is, but we, we V folded it. So this, this piece is actually two pieces mitered, but it came out of the same board. So that gives the appearance that it's the same piece of wood. And what we're looking at I'll on the back. I'll give you a little better example here. You can see that we mitered these corners. We mitered the back, the front, every, every which way is mitered so that this will slip right over that cleat. Okay. Come to me about an eighth. Look at that. Love that look right there, Jeff, too. I mean, three shelves on that side, three on this side, mantle, everything's floating. Great look. Yeah, we got two countertops to go, and then we're ready for a TV. Beautiful. Nice job. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. You may recall that our ranch house had knotty pine in just about every room. Jeff and Tom saved some of it, but at least one room in this house will pay homage to that mid-century wall cover. So it's a little beat up. We've got to clean up the edges and resurface it, but we're going to make it into a, a wainscot wall in uh, one of the kids' playrooms. Okay. So you want to give me a hand? Sure. All right. So first thing, I'm just going to cut it to, to lengths that we can manage. All right, so you notice that the edges of this are pretty beat up, so yeah. I think the first thing we'll do is run it through the table saw and get a clean edge on each side. And you're gonna save as much of this width as possible? Yeah, we'll okay. max it right out. Great. All right, now let's run them through the planer. All right. So no, this stuff is uh, really patinaed over 50 years, right. so I think the best thing, this is the best way to clean it up. And it'll flatten the surface a bit if it needs it. Right. Looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that looks a lot better. So next thing we'll do is we're gonna set up on a router table here two different size rabbits so that when we put them together, we end up with that nickel gap. Right, so you have one that's wider than the other one. Pretty simple. Right, so we'll start with the shallow one first. So now we set up for the deeper rabbit, and all we're going to do is advance this board over the thickness of our nickel gap. So Norm, this is the uh, kids' playroom, and this is the room we chose to do the uh, wainscot treatment. So we've got this set up so that uh, this wall is plywooded up to about 36 inches, so we've got a good substrate yeah. to attach to. Right. So I think what we'll do is uh, we'll just run a couple horizontal beads of, uh, of adhesive here, and then we'll just rely on the pin nails to keep it in temporarily. Sounds good. Narrow piece. Just there, it's, <laughs> it's right on the edge. All right. That's great. So then to finish it, we're going to put a paint grade cap right on top there to conceal that. And uh, this will get painted white. The base will get painted white. And then we're going to whitewash the pine. Mm -hmm. And then this will be paint. All right. It's going to look great when yeah. it's done. And it's a good use of old material. Yeah. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider. 
a new streaming service from this old house, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. This year's apprentices, Catherine and Deshaun, are taking a break from the rest of the project for a two-week trip up here to Maine. But it's not a camping trip. They've come to a special school that teaches everything from conventional home building to timber framing. The Shelter Institute is a school that teaches how to build smart, energy efficient homes. This afternoon, what we're going to do is illustrated nicely on page 121 in the notebook. Mary, who apprenticed for us on our last Rhode Island project, became an instructor here last year. Here we go. Mary, this is a big uh, treat for us to come up here and find you working at the Institute. And you've got a bit of a history with this place. Yeah, I do. So I took a two-week home building course here a couple years ago and took a timber frame course here actually about a month before I came to apprentice for you guys. Right. And then you spent two, three months with us on the job site. Right. How did you end up back here? So I actually got an email from Shelter shortly after I got home to Mississippi that they were looking for a timber frame intern. So the timing just worked out perfectly. You jumped on it, huh? Yeah. Now yeah. that you're here, what are you doing every day? What are your responsibilities? Um, so a lot of days I'm here in the shop. We build custom timber frames. Um, we also teach timber framing. So we build structures like this one here. And what am I looking at? How do you describe this? So this is a 24 by 24 post and beam structure that we build during a five day class built by students. Very cool. So do you love it? I mean... Do I love it so much. Do it's you? perfect combination of artistry and buildings. So. When we met, you had your cake business. Yes. Very accomplished, very successful in that. But you told yourself you wanted to be in the trades. How does it feel to sort of met that goal? Yeah, yeah really fulfilling. Um, it's really nice, too, that teaching has been a part of that. I would never dreamt I would have gotten the opportunity to do that as well. So. You had mentioned that one of the first things you did when you got here was ended up on a job site for a timber frame addition. Yes. How well did Jeff Sweener prepare you for that? You know what? Very well. Um, it was nice coming from two and a half months on a job site in Rhode Island to the job site here. I definitely had the gear for it mm -hmm. and <laughs> the did knowledge. Did you have the attitude? I did. I did. I, you know, working with all those Yankees, they toughen you up. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And now we've got two new apprentices, Catherine and Deshaun. Yeah. They're here. Yes. Uh, yes. You see them? I mean, We're thrilled to have Catherine and Sean here, yeah. And you're now part of that sort of continuation of the whole yeah. thing. How does that feel? Great, great. It's definitely fulfilling. You're going to treat them well for us? Oh, Teach them absolutely. hard? Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> well, congrats, Mary. We're glad you found your place. Thank you so much. Gase, yes, you have located the Institute in a beautiful spot. This is awesome. Tell me about what you've got here. The Institute started in 1974 during the first oil crisis, uh, teaching people to design and build energy efficient homes. And that mm -hmm. was the real emphasis at that time. Um, we've evolved quite a bit through the years. And today we take a more holistic look at the entire building. We start with building driveways, move into foundations, framing systems, uh, talk about wiring and plumbing, all of the details that would culminate in a house that someone would love to live in. And who are you teaching and what's the curriculum like? I'm giving you an overview and then we're going to dig We have deeper. people that have just retired that are looking to move into the next phase of life. We have people who are between jobs. We have people who are thinking about building a house. Um, and they are from all walks of life in all different parts of the country, all different ages. It's amazing to me, every class, the, the range of people that are there and, and also the reasons so that they're here. Do be conscious of how much these building materials are obviously They want to understand to what what's going on in their house. You know, when the, when the uh, lights go out, um, they want to know why and what to do to fix it. Um, when they get an ice dam in the wintertime, again, what's going on there? What can we do to fix that? So you have two of our apprentices with you. Uh, what's their curriculum like? Uh, it's very busy. So they'll be starting each day around 7.30 and not finishing till about 7.30 p.m. Usually we start out in our shop uh, with a more hands-on setting, and then we'll move back up into our classroom. Definitely intense, but I like it because it's not just like a ABC one, two, three on building. It actually forces you to analyze things a little bit more when making your decisions and building a property or a home. All day long, you are creating something and, and you get that feeling of instant gratification. And at the, 
end of the day, you have created something uh, that's very real. When I came to the first day, they gave me the feel that I can already accomplish what's coming to me. Like telling me that everything that I'm going to build is going to be something amazing, it's going to be something spectacular, but there's rules. I've been waiting for this course, it's very important to me and just because it's in my field and wanting to expand what I know in the building industry, I want to be able to take as much as I can from this and leave filled with like a 100% competent that I could go out and do this myself. Thank you for what you do here at the Institute and have done with your family for so long and uh, thank you for the invitation to join you. Thanks Kevin. And for taking care of our apprentices. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. This was the house of Joshua Babcock, a businessman, a doctor, and a major general in America's war for independence. Babcock was a friend of Benjamin Franklin, and his house is one of those special places where you can accurately say George Washington slept here. Linda Chafee is one of the trustees here at the house. Linda, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. I'd love to hear about the house built when? 1734. Mm -hmm. You know, when it was built, George Washington was only two years old. Wow. So it's been around a long time. And built for who? It was built for Joshua Babcock. He is uh, one of our very famous early citizens. He was a founding fellow of Brown University, the first Rhode Island graduate from Yale. Mm. He did a little bit of everything, so we're very proud of Joshua. And does the house that he built reflect his stature in the community? It does. It um, qualifies as a mansion in this era, has very high ceilings for the time, you know. Anybody who could afford enough fuel to keep these big rooms warm had to be wealthy. They right. have high ceilings, we have wide board floors, we have lovely woodwork. Our corner cupboard is beyond compare <laughs> and uh, the front hall is just gorgeous with its uh, railing that goes up and the newel post is just a work of art in itself. It's just excellent. So we like this house because it captures the history of Westerly in the 1700s, the 1800s and with our new granite museum it takes it into the 1900s so somebody who comes here gets a broad view of history in Westerly. Right. So good construction has lasted over the centuries. Yeah, it has. And is still telling stories thanks to your guys' efforts. Yeah, we're trying. Okay. We're trying. Well, thank you very much for uh, Thank you us for coming floor. to see us. Absolutely. 130 years after the Babcock House was built, Westerly became known for something else. Tourists. Victorian homes sprouted up and celebrities escaping Newport's spotlight hid behind Westerly's hedgerows. Clark Gable and Henry Ford were residents. And today, so too are Taylor Swift and Conan O'Brien. Jack, nice hey, to Kevin. meet you. How are you? I am well. I appreciate you picking me up nice and showing me around. Well, this is a little gem of a car you have here. Yeah, just to take people from the uh, train station to the hotel. And what is it? This is a 1913 uh, Model T Depot hat. Wow. So train station and hotel was, uh, says a lot of people came here as tourists to visit this area. The Watch Hill went from having a lighthouse and farming to uh, large hotels, steamboats, and then it became a cottage colony. And so what are we at now? We're coming down to Watch Hill Point, and in front of us is the lighthouse. Well, Jack, you've got a beautiful spot right here. I really appreciate you showing us around and bringing out the old beauty for it. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming. If Watch Hill is for the upper crust, Musquamina Beach is for the rest of us. This seven-mile stretch of sand attracts people from all over New England. I think I know the answer, but what's the attraction? It's the water. It's the beach. It's the, it's the great times. It's the memories. It's the experience. We're just, we're the great a great section of Rhode Island and coastal Rhode Island. Our project house is two miles directly up the hill from here. A nice bike ride in the summer. Hey, John. Hey, good morning, Jen. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So we're starting the steps today. We are starting the steps today. Um, this is the front entry to the house. Okay. A little more formal than uh, the steps that are going to happen in the back of the house. Right. Here we start with a landing. Uh, there's going to be a couple of steps here. Uh, 
We've laid out the rest of the walkway. We have three more steps in this location that'll match those. And this is going to be the bluestone walkway all the way down. It looks like you use a couple less steps than I had on the plan. Right, we had to take into account the grading. So now we're moving the stone into position. The guys are going to put some mortar on top of, of, the, block. of the block here right. to create a setting bed. And we score the bottom of the tread in different directions. There's no particular pattern. What we want to do is create some depth so that the mortar will push up into this and help it from shifting laterally um, in the winter time. That makes sense. It's just like pottery. So right now we're getting ready to put the, uh, the glue on the bottom of the, of the tread. And that's a thinner uh, mixture than the thicker setting bed. You can really see the difference. It's, it's li more liquid. Right. They're setting it. They bring it to that line we talked about. It's going to go right in perfectly. So what about that granite? That's out back. Let's take a look. All right. Hey, good morning, Shayla. Hi, John. Hi, Jen. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, we're installing steps for you today. We started out front. Now we're going to start uh, in the back here with the Westerly Granite steps. And these are the ones that we saw in the quarry and being cut. Nice right. smooth top sur tread surface, the rock face front. They're beautiful. And the way we install these steps is we dig out the native earth. We backfill with gravel. We compact that gravel. We add a little sand so that we can shim the bottom, get the pitch correct, set the first step. So now that we're ready to install the second step, we're going to use this contraption here. This is a vacuum lift. Um, it's a new way that we use to install heavy steps like this instead of the old way, which would have been to use a couple of slings. And what happens is this is connected to our excavator and we swing it into place almost like a crane um, and set it down. Now it uses a vacuum suction system. And if there's a problem with the stone or it needs some kind of adjustment, we can very easily pick it back up, add a little more sand, level it out set it back down. I have a question. So you said mm -hmm. the, the stone pieces are about five, 600 pounds? Yeah, when they were delivered, um, they said they were each were about 600 pounds. Okay, so how many pounds does this one lift? So this particular unit will lift 1,400 pounds, so we're well oh, within okay. uh, the range. This is a lot safer too, because no one's gonna have their fingers underneath the stone as we're pulling straps out like we used to. Okay, and that looks perfect. Great, thank you. It's deep enough that it's comfortable, but it's not too much because you want the right cadence okay. walking up the step. So you want to give it a shot? Sure. That's yeah, perfect. It's more of a relaxed entry, informal entryway. Mm -hmm. So we had to do from point A to point B. The slope also dictated the length that we had to stretch it to. Right. So, and you wanted westerly granite. We did. I absolutely love these. Yeah, so I am excited about this, and the front's going to look great. So let's keep on going. That sounds good to me. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.